Thank you so much, everybody. There's been some wonderful speeches today, so I'm kind of nervous to, uh, to take the podium. It really is wonderful to be here today celebrating again. It feels a little bit more like old times. We have the band back. We're getting there. We're coming through the pandemic. It's a day of joy. It's a day of joy for you, um, our graduating class. I really want to start by thanking all of those whose hard work has gone into creating this special day. Uh, Ms. Ndozi and Kayosam, uh, the student and parent organizing committees, Mr. Davis, the facilities team, the IT team, the office staff, many, many, many others. A massive team that has worked incredibly hard to make today a real success. So for everybody that's worked so hard for today, let's give them all a big round of applause, please. <laughs> to the class of 2022, this is your special day. And what a journey it has been to get here. And along that journey, you've had so many teachers and staff supporting you every step of the way. And many of those teachers are seated here in the audience. Many others are following along uh, on the online broadcast. And also, of course, without the vision and, and the strategy and the guidance of our volunteer board of directors and trustees, then your journey to graduation would not also have been possible. So I would like to thank all the teachers, all the staff, uh, the board of directors, the board of trustees. Please stand so that we can thank you today. Please stand. <laughs> and to the parents of our graduating seniors, congratulations. Your babies finally grew up. How could that even be possible? You probably think it was only yesterday that you were taking them uh, for their first day in preschool, and now here they are, these amazing young adults, ready to step out, leave home, impact the world, and make you proud. And we know that they will. You have incredible children. You should be amazingly proud of them. Parents also, parents, please stand so we can congratulate you today. Parents, please stand. Thank you. I, I'd like you to know, I'm also clapping you, but because of the wind, I've got my hand on my speech. So I'm clapping down here, but thank you, parents. So graduates, you made it. You came, you inquired, you inspired, you impacted, and you included. Your classmates who have grown together, laughed together, learned together, sometimes cried together. You're stronger simply because you are you. You're ready for the world. The world is ready for you. It's time to go out there into that big, exciting place beyond NIS. And in the words of your graduation motto, it's time to float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. We're proud of you, class of 2022. You know, I really like that motto, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I love how Haruka embedded it into the artwork of all the beautiful butterflies, and then there's that bee. It's wonderful. So I wanted to know why you chose it. Some of you told me it means being free and open, but standing for what you believe is right. Others told me it represents the unique talents which all of us hold, but maybe they're not obvious. Some others said it means staying positive, striking down negativity wherever you find it. One of you thought it was actually a literal description of your class. Apparently, some of you are butterflies, some of you are bees. I'll let your teachers decide which is which. And of course, all of those great reasons can all be true. That's the great thing about a motto. It can be whatever you want it to be. In 1964, a young boxer called Cassius Clay was a massive underdog in his fight against the reigning world champion, Sonny Liston. Liston was considered to be completely unstoppable. In fact, there were legitimate fears that Cassius Clay would not only lose, he may even die in the fight. Nobody in their wildest dreams thought that he would win. Nobody, that is, except, of course, for Cassius Clay. Shortly before he stepped into the ring, Clay was asked, so how are you going to approach this fight against the great Sonny Liston? His answer is now famous. He said, I'm going to fly like a butterfly. I'm going to sting like a bee. And he did just that. 
Against all the odds, Sonny Liston was out of the fight by the seventh round. And a month later, the new undisputed heavyweight champion of the world converted to Islam, changed his name to Muhammad Ali, and the rest, as they say, is history. Fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee was the quote that came to define Ali's fighting style. He would dance around his opponents, just like a butterfly, making them tired and flat-footed. And then he'd land that killer punch, that killer knockout blow, just like a bee. He trained hard to develop this style. He's famous for jumping rope while moving around the gym. He would never stay in one spot. He needed to float, he needed to be light. He'd go on long runs, but he would wear these heavy boots so that when he was in the ring, he would be free like a butterfly. But something you might not know about your graduation motto is it's actually only half of what he said. And so your motto is actually only half the story. To really understand Muhammad Ali, you need to know the full quote. And the full quote goes like this. Fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee. The hands can't hit what the eyes can't see. He was also a poet. Fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee. The hands can't hit what the eyes can't see. And it's only when you hear that full quote that you really begin to understand the man. Because Muhammad Ali was far more than just a boxer. The philosophy that defined him in the ring also defined him as a human being. Before he died in 2016, Muhammad Ali would go on not only to become the three times world heavyweight champion and one of the most famous sports personalities on the planet, but he would also be a United Nations, uh, United Nations messenger for peace. He would be the recipient of the Pre Presidential Medal of Freedom, the winner of the Otto Hahn Peace Medal. Muhammad Ali transcended issues of philanthropy, of race, of politics, of war, of peace. He was so loved that when he died in 2016, over a billion people tuned in worldwide to watch his memorial service and they weren't all boxing fans. The first part of that quote, the part about the butterflies and the bees, that's the physical, dancing around the ring, delivering the killer blow. But the second part, the second part, that's cognitive. It tells you about his thinking, his strategy, his approach to life. Put simply, you can't sting like a bee if you don't know where to sting. And some bees only get one sting, so sting well and have the right impact. You have to float, you have to be flexible, you have to be nimble, you have to be self-aware, be smart. And if you do, then you'll know when and how to make an impact. You'll know when and how to sting like a bee and really make it count. And this is what he did. He was a conscientious objector in the Vietnam War. He led campaigns against apartheid and racial injustice. He was a goodwill ambassador for the, to the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War. He negotiated hostage releases. He talked suicidal people off the edge. He led famine relief, anti-racism initiatives. He promoted Islam as a religion of peace in the face of Islamophobia following 9-11. None of these were random acts of kindness. This was strategic. It was intentional. It was deliberate, just like Ali the boxer in the, in the ring. He floated like a butterfly to observe, to understand, to interpret the issues of the world. And when he knew he was ready, he stung like a bee for maximum impact. He was successful because his hands could hit what his eyes could see. So what did he see and how did he know what to hit? You know, there's many millions of amazing people in the world each of them having an impact and making a difference every single day. Some of them are like Ali. They're famous. They make these big, bold actions. They become household names. They sometimes even say things which 12th graders around the world choose to use for their graduation motto. But others are the unsung heroes. They never become famous, but they're the people that hold our community together. They float like a butterfly, trying to see and understand those around them and trying to understand themselves so that they know when and how to act and have impact and make a difference. You know these people, they're all around you. They're your teachers, your mentors, your parents, your friends. How do they do it? How do these unsung heroes have such positive impact? 
As a boxer, Ali spent hours in training to understand his own body weight, his strength, how to use it to his advantage. And as a humanitarian, he did the same thing. He understood himself. He picked the causes where he had a passion, where he had a belief, a confidence in his ability to do the most good. Understanding himself and understanding the world around him helped him know when and how to make the impact that he did. For Muhammad Ali, his source of strength, his understanding of himself, it came from his faith. He was a philanthropist, a civil rights activist, he was a humanitarian. But first of all, he was a Muslim. For him, his faith was the guiding light through which he understood both himself and his world. Now, you're not Muhammad Ali. You have to find your own guiding light. You have to find your own moral purpose. Perhaps for you, it's also your faith. Perhaps you find your grounding in a more secular sense of citizenship and ethics. Perhaps it comes from the morals and the values your parents and your teachers have taught you. Perhaps it's your innate personal belief about what is right and what is wrong. Whatever your moral compass might be, you have to find it, cherish it, hold on to it, don't ever let it go. Butterflies can easily be blown away by the wind and a bee that stings without reason achieves no purpose. It's only through your moral anchor, by holding true to your identity, to who you are and what you stand for, that you will have the wisdom and the insight to make an impact on the world around you. You all have this capacity within you, your NIS graduates, and that means you don't only understand the world, you also understand yourselves. You're not just mathematicians and scientists and historians. You're critical thinkers, you're inquirers, you're reflective, you're principled. You know yourself, you know the world. Class of 2022, you are ready. Your parents know it, your teachers know it, you know it. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and we know you will hit because you have learned how to see. Congratulations, class of 2022.